Hi everyone, it's Simon Keely here at weatherweb.net. Thanks again for watching. This is your look ahead video updated on Thursday, the 4th of December. And models playing games with us at the moment uh, as to how things develop next week and how cool or potentially cold it becomes next week. I'm still not convinced that they've got it pinned down just at the moment. But uh, more about that in just a few moments. Um, Big news yesterday was the WMO releasing its report saying that 2014 could turn out to be the warmest on record. And interesting to just look at the data and just see what that's actually saying. I don't know about you, but whenever there's talk of climate change, it's just so confusing. Just a mass of data presented to you and always more questions raised. So I want to have a look at that as well. But just before I go on, um, those of you who've ordered uh, my Weatherwise DVD, and there are lots of you, just to let you know, we had a new batch of those arrive, so those are being dispatched. So the delivery time on those at the moment is about two to three days, but with the new ones here, then you should get to next day or the day after delivery. So thanks for your patience. Those of you who've been waiting a couple of days for them, they are now on their way. And of course, you can order those from the website. They really do make an ideal Christmas present. And there's also my book, The Pocket Weather Forecaster, which is just under 90 pages, full colour, and it shows how you can identify the clouds and also make predictions on uh, looking at the clouds and deciding what weather they're likely to bring. Both of those are available from weatherweb.net now. OK, so as I say, lots of confusing information coming out yesterday uh, regarding uh, climate change. And of course, climate is always changing, isn't it? We seem to have softened uh, the words that we use now and, and turned it into climate change. But actually, it really should be uh, anthropogenic climate change, because that's what we're interested in, the impact that humans are having. And I kind of, as you know, changed my views on this. But you've got to deal with the data as it's presented and when the facts stare you in the face you kind of can't ignore it. This is from the uh, NOAA NCEP site and it shows year-to-date global temperatures, measured temperatures uh, for land and ocean surfaces uh, and it compares this year uh, with the five warmest years on record going back to the 1850s and you can see here look 2014 <coughs> excuse me marked on by the uh, black line here and you can see how that's now come above the other years and is starting to show itself as the warmest. And here's what they're basing their predictions on that uh, we heard yesterday about it being the warmest year uh, on the record as I say going back into the 1850s. And um, the red is 2010, the black line here is 2014 and you can see here that even with the worst scenarios we stay in warmest territory. So it does look as if it is going to be very warm. Now, of course, there was also talk yesterday of the Central England temperature. Now, the reason for that is because the Central England temperature series, uh, which is calculated from temperatures around uh, conglomerate stations in Central England, is the longest running continuous uh, measured temperature series in the world. So it's a, a very good indicator. Um, and the this is from the Met Office website, by the way. They keep a daily running total of mean Central England temperatures, and it's very useful. Uh, and hats off to the Met Office, because we are starting to get more climate data out of them now, certainly more than we've had in the past. So, uh, you know, well done them. Credit where credit's due. This is the mean Central England temperature series, and this is the rolling temperature series uh, up to the beginning of December. And what we're interested in are the months down here, down the left-hand side, and the anomaly figures here, because you can see that every month this year, apart from August, and don't we remember that from the summer holidays, remember August starting off fine, and then it just collapsed, didn't it? We just lost to summer. Um, every month apart from August showing as warmer than normal. November came in at 2 degrees above, December so far 1.4 degrees above. Maybe some alteration in that next week, um, but you'd need to be going some uh, to get those figures down. So the averages so far are 11.45 degrees Celsius for the central England temperature up to the end of November, and the highest ever on record was 10.82 degrees Celsius. So in order for us to uh, beat that record, okay, so in order for us to, to, to beat that record, not much needs to change from now on in. Um, 
basically you'd need to see quite a collapse in temperatures in order not to beat that record. So it does look as if it is shaping up to be very warm. And to put it in a historical context for you, uh, this is the mean Central England temperature series, again from the Met Office website, going back to 1772. And um, the red line here you'll be familiar with. You've seen that temperature trace there. Look, that's the anomaly running through the middle there. And look what happens. This is the increase in temperature here taking place uh, from about 1980 onwards. And it's, it's that, uh, the shape here, that of course causes the uh, the concern um but you notice as well look how late on in the graph so in that zone just in here we see the fall off in temperature take place but look we're seeing this kick back up again um this year so or or, or over the last few years so um is this a sign of some changes to to come is that kick now in place i mean we you can see that pattern going back here look in the 1880s did something similar fell off came back up again and all the way through we see that sort of trace line so you know that that stands out as being pretty warm doesn't it and if we compare that series with the global average temperatures, so this is temperatures across the globe from 1850 using several temperature series. So this is from the Met Office Hadley Centre and uh, the Climate Research Unit at University of East Anglia. It uses the uh, NOAA National Climatic Data Centre data set and the NASA data set and all of them basically showing the same thing which is this sharp rise in global temperatures. Now, of course, there's been much talk about the hiatus in warming, that slow down in warming that took place here, look, in recent years. You see how we saw that sharp increase in temperature, and then that happens, look, we kind of get this tail off in temperatures so that's been going on now for the best part of 16, 17 years. So there was much talk about why that occurred. And in fact, I've mentioned it here on WeatherWeb a lot of the time, you know, saying this is the elephant in the room. And climate scientists are notoriously bad at communicating the story they're trying to give. And this was one that they were just trying to ignore. Or rather, they perhaps thought that it wasn't relevant, uh, but treated the public, basically, I think, with contempt in just not facing the problem head on. But it is a problem, and one of the theories that was espoused, and we've got to be careful with this because it is still an early theory, was that the oceans were acting as a heat sink. So they were basically absorbing the uh, warmth that was generated within the atmosphere. And we know that that's what the oceans do. They, they kind of act as a giant storage heater. So they're, they're dragging in heat and then they release it slowly over a period of time. But there is only so much heat that an ocean can absorb, exactly the same as a storage heater. You know, it will have a thermostat that will just click off. And basically the theory was that that was what the oceans were doing. They were absorbing the heat, but there would come a point where they couldn't observe any more. Now, this is global ocean heat content. So this goes from, uh, we're going back into the 1950s here, through to 2014. And um, what to notice here, look, is the increase that we've seen in global heat content. A significant increase. And it's been rising steadily. So there seems to be some sort of lag between warming in the atmosphere and then warming of the oceans. But certainly this seems to have taken place so there does seem to be some traction in this theory of the oceans acting as these heat sinks and of course we all know of carbon dioxide as the bogeyman of the uh, of, of anthropogenic climate change argument this is co2 um, measured at manoa loa uh, on hawaii um, it's longest running record of measured carbon dioxide um, where people actually go out and do the measurements by hand and you can see here look that rise taking place in co2 levels so that we're now uh, knocking through the 400 level carbon dioxide comes from many sources of course it's coming from uh, natural sources but it's also coming from us you know there's no doubt about that when we're burning fossil fuels we're putting more co2 into the atmosphere the question is that link between co2 and temperature and when you look at that dramatic rise in co2 and you look at the rise in temperature the link seems to be established until you see that the temperature graph kind of uh, does something like this 
uh, the temperature graph goes up like so and then does that. So it's almost as if the link within this region is broken. But while CO2 grabs the headline, carbon dioxide, methane is the real dangerous villain in the atmosphere. Uh, methane, again, generated naturally by many sources, but also exacerbated by humans. So this is the stuff where, you know, you hear about... Uh, cattle breaking wind basically um, puts more methane into the atmosphere and obviously we're breeding more cattle because we want to eat more food uh, it also comes from many other uh, sources as well so it's coming from uh, landfill uh, obviously as things rot down they release methane now methane is slightly different to co2 in the atmosphere co2 has a small effect on climate but over a long period where methane has a dramatic a large effect on climate i think it's uh I'm going to, no, I'm not going to quote a figure because it's uh, I, I can't be certain of it, but it's a, a high figure compared to CO2. So it has a high impact, but for a shorter period. So it's just not in the atmosphere as long. And these records go back to 1984, again from Manoa Loa, or Mauna Loa, I suppose we should say. And you see that, you know, that rise in um, methane in the atmosphere. Look, it kind of levels off a little bit around the 2000s, and then we start to see this rise taking place again. So it's gone up significantly, look, from um, 1,650 moles up to now, we're into the, well, almost getting up to 1,870 moles. So there's, a, there's definitely an increase in methane as well. And that distribution of methane across the globe is an interesting uh, feature too. This shows um, the concentration up here. It shows the latitude here. So we've got the equator here. This is the northern hemisphere. This is the southern hemisphere. And then the years across the bottom here. So we're not going back um, hugely far on this one. We're only going back to just prior to the 2000s. But you can see here, look, how year on year we've seen this increase in methane amounts. Uh, and it's largely in the Northern Hemisphere, just because basically, of course, that's where it's more industrialized. So we've, we've seen this increase in methane taking place. And of course, the argument goes that, well, this is nothing new. We've always seen ups and downs in CO2 and in methane and in um, temperature as well. So. This is a chart going back, I mean these are reconstructions, don't forget, this is a chart going back uh, half a million years and this is present here, this here is half a million years ago, so we're going backwards in time by going from left to right through the chart and um, what to notice from this one is, yeah look, this is uh, CO2, so we do get peaks and troughs, you know, there's a natural cycle there you can see it, can't you? Undoubtedly, there's a natural cycle there in CO2 values. Um, but, of course, this higher value here, look, is 280. But we've actually now broken that, and we're up here somewhere. So we've gone up to the 400s. So it's coming out beyond these figures here. Also, uh, temperature, you see here, look, natural variations in temperature too. So we've come up, we stabilised a little bit, look, but now temperatures are starting to rise once again. So we're seeing the effect of that take place. Methane on this line, on this graph, is shown in green. So again, look, we've got a natural cycle taking place there, haven't we? That's, that's clear to see. But we're now higher than those figures. So we're now, methane is now sort of up here at this sort of level and you see it hasn't peaked at that or we or from what we can tell it hasn't peaked at that previously so the only change that there is here compared to being back here and here and here as far as we can tell is i'm sorry to say folks us and here's another chart that just puts it into context this time we're looking at this is the present here and we're going back eleven thousand years so we're we're close to where we are now and co2 is shown on the bottom here and you see here look a, a natural increase in co2 taking place uh over the sort of past six thousand years above is temperature okay now obviously this is from ice core samples so you do have to treat it carefully but you know you say look you've got a natural up and down cycle here in temperature look that takes place but notice what happens we've got this fall off 
taking place in here. And then we've got a rise, and that rise in temperature at the moment is taking us up to there. It's a sharp rise over a very short period. In fact, just to emphasize the, the, the point with this one, um, and again, I'm not making any judgments here, I'm just saying this is what the data shows. Actually, to emphasize this, we should really go like that, because that's almost a vertical line. Now, there have been look, times in the past where we've seen sharp rises taking place so we've got to be aware of that but <clears throat> excuse me it does seem that the rising temperature the rising co2 the rising methane amounts all seem to be linked uh, although there's a strong argument to be made here that actually there is an underlying rise in co2 levels that takes place anyway it is just that um, we're adding to this. So whereas this ends up, look, at near the sort of 280 mark, that now is up at the 400. So it kind of does that. So it, it takes a sharp increase because of the human activity. Or at least we think it's because of human activity. So what conclusions can we draw? Well, <clears throat> I hope I haven't confused you uh, any more than sort of yesterday's press releases did. I think probably what we've got to take from it is that there seems to be uh, a realistic chance that actually temperatures are rising globally, uh, that the amount of CO2 is rising globally, and the amount of methane is rising globally as well. And despite there being an under underlying natural tendency for those increases to take place as part of a normal cycle, it looks like humans are contributing significantly uh, to those amounts. It does look as if the oceans are playing a part in this as well, acting as a heat sink, and they may be preparing to release their heat. Although, you know, as 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 humans, we do have this constant one eye, don't we, on our own mortality. Uh, and, you know, as a species, I often think we're obsessed with death. Um, but there does seem to be some sort of link there. So I think on the balance of probability, you've got to say humans are somehow exacerbating uh, natural climate change and I think that's the way to look at it it is a an enhancement of natural climate change the climate change that would take place anyway so should we do anything probably in my opinion yes we should we should be acting we should be probably acting fairly quickly and fairly dramatically as well to get this sorted and you know that can be something as simple as getting the idea of carbon capture and storage, and, and storage sorted, dramatically reducing the CO2 uh, impact of transport and reducing that going out from cars, being aware of our own uh, polluting tendencies. So that includes things like um, landfill, what goes into landfill, recycling as much as we possibly can, so long as those recyclers then don't release the methane. Uh, and also, and this is really hard for a stringent meat eater like me, you know, I'm a hardcore carnivore, um, it's actually look at the amount of meat we're eating because of the methane that's being released. It's, it kind of all goes in. It's They're all small blocks, aren't they? Small pieces that can make a difference. Um, but I'm not on the high horse about this. You know, we all have to look at it and make our own decision based on the evidence. I just wish the scientists were a little less uh, vociferous in their communication and a little more clear in their communication as well. And, uh, of course, when the politicians get involved, that's when we lose trust as well, isn't it? Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave you with that for now. I'm getting off my soapbox. I'm not really on the soapbox. I'm just showing you the facts as they are. So I'm going to leave you with that for now. But whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. And keep the sun shining. Bye for now.